This is kind of like Picks by the Glick. And I'm your host, Jason Glick. How's it going, Jason? Hey, it's going all right. And as promised last last time, I'm talking about one of the most important characters in the American comic books writing scene. That would be Ed Brubaker. So, like, for those of you who don't realize that Ed Brubaker is fucking awesome... He's scratch, fucking awesome. Yeah, scratch that. Like, if you realize that Ed... Br no, wait. If you realize that Ed Brubaker is fucking awesome, then... Okay, yeah, you just go ahead and stop listening now. <laughs> For those of you who don't realize that he is fucking awesome, okay, let me tell you, let me tell you what's up with him. Brew Baker has been around for years. He is what, the preeminent writer of crime of crime fiction and espionage oriented stories um, in in America's comic comics market. He has been like he yeah, he's been writing such great great stories as Sleeper, which I've already talked about. Um, actually, almost I can say years ago now on the podcast. So and um. And also his, his um, best-selling run on Marvel's Captain America, which has been fantastic, as, even as he's killed off Captain America, replaced him with his former sidekick, Bucky. And that's been, it's been so good to the point where like, the fact that they're bringing back Steve Rogers as Captain America, I'm like, no, I don't want you to do that. You're doing such a great job with Bucky as Captain America. I want you to do more stories with him. Yeah, and it's, and it's been great. And and his, um, his creator-owned series, such as, such as Criminal and Incognito, which we'll be talking about more later, are just been... Uh, Utterly fantastic. He, like, he is a man right now. Like, he like, he can he can do no wrong. Yeah, and you know, like, I realize that you know, like, if I were to talk about just like every give him like a nice career summer overview of him, like we'd be here for like this would be about like three podcasts worth of stuff. So, I just want to talk about some like some more interesting stuff I've re I've read I've been reading and rereading over the stuff for the past week. Now, as far as I know, like the first thing he got noticed for was um. Series of semi autobiographical work called The Complete Low Life um, from, from Top Shelf Publishing. Mm -hmm. It's just a story of like a, a loser named Tommy that I'm assuming like has a certain um, basis in, in um, like being like Ed Brubaker himself, but just like showing him like just being like a complete, complete loser, just like um, skimming off work, getting scoring drugs for to use with him for him and his friends, and just being a all around jerk to just about everyone he meets. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a great guy. Yeah. yeah. And, but it's, but on one hand, it's like, you look at this and think, yeah, like, you know, it's like, it's, it's an interesting character study for a guy like, you know, like, I'm not, I'm not, this, like, I'm not this guy, but it's interesting to see, see someone who's like, who's like so, so complete, completely and utterly like amoral and selfish, like for, for the most part anyway. But it's, it's a nice, nice book and the sort the um, collection and title of Complete Low Life is a nice calling so it's a nice calling card for his later works. I mean, like he really only, it's a it's a fun like um misspent youth type story, which he also went to explore later in his also touched upon in his his other series he did for DC Vertigo called Dead Enders, which is a fun which is a fun youth gone wild in the future story. But these it takes place in a post cataclysm world where where these where these kids like in this one low life in this one low life summer just running wild while the rest of the rest of the world just like night lit goes on goes on living as usual like in the higher class suburbs which actually have like nice things like weather as opposed to just like a not like a great like great overcast cast world that the slum people live in like it's i re, I read it and it's like it's it's fun it's good stuff it's but the um the first, only volume they collected of it basically focuses on the main character beezer who gets who has these he's like a traditional like he's like a like a traditional like a lose like um like, like young punk type character who go, makes his living on running running drugs and causing chaos, and um after one after he winds up getting one of his friends um almost fatally injured in an accident, he wants he resolves to um give this guy one one less good time before before he dies, and that involves going over to one of the higher class areas and stealing some of their weather because this is like trust me this is how the future is set up they can. They can, this, this, they can see like they've got their own weather generators in order to um take 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 their minds off the uh like the, the overcast um polluted skies of the that of the future they've got here. Mm. And it's a it's a good story. It's like rereading this. I wish that um DC had gone and collected more of his stuff, but they seem particularly averse to collecting a lot of Brubaker stuff. This includes his issues of Batman and um Gotham Central that he co-wrote with with um Greg Rucka. Because apparently, like Brubaker is full Marvel exclusive now, and apparently DC they they don't want to give props to anyone who who's Marvel exclusive right now. Mm. Just ask Mark Miller. <laughs> yeah. So, but so like on one hand, it's like I 
I'll I'll see if I can get around to collecting the rest of these issues of Dead Enders because like the first first one was good, but even better though is a um is a miniseries that he that he did um for um called um Scene of the Crime, a little piece of good night. It's this is a this is um a series that, that basically kind of sets up what it becomes a come his hallmark. So like a cr good character driven crime crime fiction story. Now basically fo focuses on this one guy. Named Jack Harriman, who who um, spent a lot of the spent most of his youth trying to um trying to get himself get himself killed and just um like blow blow apart his family family life, but he since settled down and become a private investigator. Now he's thrown a case by his by by a cop who by by his uncle a cop, and um he's trying to find this trying this missing find this girl. Now the thing is he finds the girl finds out that there's like some complicated family issues and then later. Like after he leaves her in the first issue, she winds up dead in the next. So he's got to find out like why did why was she killed, and like what are all the mysteries that, the, that her family family was hiding. I reread this, and one of the things I know about this series, it's not really a whodunit. Like you're not trying to figure out. There's not a whole lot of clues left to, like for you to figure out who did this. Um, and like you can't really like, try to guess it, but it's more like why they did it. And in that sense, it's fascinating. It's just a great, well drawn. Well drawn character today. I mean, Jack, I mean, he's he's an interesting complex complex character, not like it's it's fun seeing this guy who used used to be like um hell on wheels trying to actually like do the right thing and try to like um, make make things right in his in his own way and usually failing, which makes things which makes his efforts even more interesting. It's got art by Michael Michael Ark, who's worked worked with Brubaker on both Captain America and Gotham Central, and it's and it's fantastic. It's like I I'm not sure if this is still in print, but if you can find it, it's it's great stuff. And okay. to be honest, it's like it seems like um they were they might have been this is, might have been set up for um Brew Baker to do more with the, with Jack and the rest of the supporting cast, but yeah, like now that he's um not a DC anymore, I don't think that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like I said, these days he's more he's at Marvel and he's been doing all sorts of stuff. I mean, he's had he's had run. Um, those were runs on X Men, Daredevil, and his ongoing run on Cap Captain America. It was his creator own projects. But let me just say a couple things about his X Men stuff, because for a guy who specializes in, in um great in um in crime driven stuff, the fact he he actually wrote some good X Men stories, um, particularly in the form of um Deadly Genesis, uh, an interesting retcon story of their original of the X Men's original mission, which introduces the third Summers brother Gabriel Summers. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, and the rise and the fall of the Shi'ar um, Empire arc, which basically um, d details the um, Professor X's and a select group of X Men, including um, Havoc, Polaris, um, Mar um, Marvel Girl, Warpath, and um, Darwin the Evolving Boy, a character that Brubaker created, um, going um, out to the Shi'ar Empire to save, save it from Volk from from Gabriel Summers, the third Summers brother, who's not calling himself Vulcan, um, from his vengeance. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Well written superhero stuff, and it's more impressive by the fact that like, even though Brad Grubaker like like made his name for like like, so, like intimate cr char um, crime um, character driven crime stuff, he's able to like, actually pull off like a a, a big epic um, cosmic X Men story. I mean, this is really far out of like the guy's comfort zone. And I won't say this is like this is necessarily an X Men story. X Men story I'd recommend to everyone. Especially since the um, op opening arc, um, Deadly Genesis, is really mired in X Men continuity, it's it's a, it's amazing that it works as well as it does. It's like considering, considering where his interests normally lie. Now, for a character that um, does is up Blue Baker's alley, it's um, Daredevil, and um, he and Blue Baker um, followed up on um, Brian Michael Bendis's um, legendary run on the series, and most people would, would say that yeah, if you're gonna pick a guy to follow up. Um, Bendis, like Brubaker, would be the guy to do it, and for the most part, he is. But looking back on the entire Brubaker run, a lot of it, generally the majority of it, is just spent getting it out from all of the stuff that um that Bendis left left him because Bendis basically left um Matt Murdock in jail facing um facing criminal charges, and also he also left him married as well, so. The majority of Brubaker's run is left a getting him 
to get him out from those um, from those criminal charges and from public scrutiny, and B, getting him out from from being married as well. Now, to be honest, his best his best arc is the um, opening arc, um, the Devil. It's like uh, the Devil in, Inside and Out, Volume One, which basically t- shows you um, Matt Matt stay in prison, and how he actually like has to um, how he winds up uh, meeting up with want me up with the Punisher and Bullseye inside, and and Wells the Wells the Punisher, which is great stuff because I because it shows him like really hit really hitting bottom, and then just finding like yo what do I have to, like I can just like let myself become like my like the villains or I can just you know like try to like try to find find the reserves to get to get back out and it's great it's great stuff but everything else is just kind of like suffers from the sense that you know he's working to get Daredevil back to the status quo. In order for him to tell the stories he wants, which really only lasted for about a year or so, when between the uh, Lady Bullseye and um, Return of the King um, volumes, it's like I said, it's it's good, but it's marred by the fact that you know, I wanted to see him do more stuff with the character, more original stuff that wasn't tied down by by Bendis's run. So, I mean, we'll never see what that's gonna how it's gonna turn out, but. Like I'm looking forward to seeing what um, new incoming Daredevil writer, writer Andy Diggle does. Like if he's just gonna let himself be tied down by Brubaker's run, which sets up Daredevil with a whole new status quo, mm-hmm. and um, if he's just gonna like let himself be tied down there, or if he's just gonna like carve out his own his own um, stand right there. I gotcha. Yeah, but I don't know, the thing is these days, like um, with Brubaker, like things with Brubaker's like his most fascinating stuff these is his creator own stuff that he's doing with, with artist Sean Phillips. Now, Sean Phillips, great fucking artist. He's, I don't really necessarily have a favorite artist, not an artist I, I would just buy just because, like, this guy's drawing it. But, um, Sean Phillips comes damn close because just about everything he draws, it's usually something I'm interested in. And most of it these days is done with Brubaker. I mean, he did a great job, great job with him on Sleeper, and now he's been teeing up with Brubaker for, um, for the, for his Criminal series. Criminal is basically a straight, straightforward um, crime fiction stories of really bad people in bad circumstances who find themselves forced to do good things. Now that's great recipe for great moral, like moral ambiguity. It's like and lot and and conflict as well. It's there's there's been four volumes so far. Let's see, let's see, coward, lawless, the dead, the dying, and bad night. All great, fa- fascinating yarns. They're all standalone volumes, but if you read them all together, you notice that they're all kind of they're all in- interconnected as well. They've got all like they get, they share some of the same characters, but you can read you can read them entirely out of order, and and you'll still you'll still be able to enjoy them because like they're just because they're struct- they're structured that well. And there's another series coming um coming out right now called The Sinners, which focuses on Tracy Lawless, the star of the um the second volume Lawless Natch. And it's, and like I'm looking forward to seeing that because it's going to be the longest criminal arc by, by six years, um, six years total instead of um five, instead of the usual four or five. And like oh, that should be know, that should be um, collect that should be finished in the next three months or so. And it's like I I heard lots of good things good things about that, but I'm I'm absolutely looking forward to seeing how it turns out. But uh, Brew Baker and Phillips's latest um work is called Incognito. Now, while Criminal has been um, doing doing all right in terms of sales, it really has been selling in really gangbusters Marvel, um, Marvel Comics um, like level sales, and so like for instance, like Incognito was done as kind of way to like you know, hey, why don't you do an, an in- a good an interesting superhero story to, like, in- to um energize the Marvel Comics crowd, like turn them on to your work, and you know like and for anyone else that would be a recipe for a creative and recipe for creative and commercial suicide with um Brubaker and Phillips though it turns into a great um flip side examination of Sleeper because while Sleeper was a folk showed like a, like a superhero who was trying to um he was infiltrating a, on a, a supervillain organization and trying to try to remain true true to his um principles and morals um, um Incognito is the flip side of that it's a villain who basically joins like this world's version of um superhero witness protection like he's He's given drugs in order to dampen his superhero powers, and, and he's taken a and he's given a job. And the main character, his name's got a great name, Zach Overkill. 
and he's given a dot. He's given like a, a file clerk job in this in this nameless firm, and so like he's just he's just given the job. Okay, blend in, and it's like you can and you can live out your life. And he's he's doing this, and he's just kind of, like, and he's like, no, my life fucking sucks, <laughs> until the day that he that he finds out that all the drugs he's doing in order to cope with his with his with his meaningless existence, because like he was used to be like one of the a great super like one of the like most more notable supervillains. Like he was. Working under the black, working under the black death as one of his top operatives until he he and his brother were targeted for extermination because the black death thought he was selling them out. Not true, but he winds up, but he winds up being um captured by the good guys and it's like and um after he finds out his brother was dead dead in the assault he he gives he turns state's evidence and now he's in his protection as I just said, so he so it's like. But he's he hates his life, and he find, once he finds that his drugs are canceling out the um, power dampening drugs that his that his um, watchers are, that his um, supervisor are, give, are giving him, he just starts going out and just start like, just beating up on bad guys. You know, not necessarily because he wants to be a good guy, but just because like you know it feels good just being a to be an anonymous guy who no one knows who you are, and just like just just doing just beating on the people who deserve it. Naturally, this doesn't last because. Not only does one of his co-workers at work find out who he is, the bad guys find out who he is as well, as do the good guys. Now, the good guys don't sell him out because, you know what, they figure, hey, you know what, we're going to use you as bait to um, try get some of the um, elements of, the, um, of, of your old organization who we weren't able to capture and, and lure them out so we, so we can find out what's, go what's going on. Now, Incognito, fascinating story in all, in all its complexity, and th and it's also one of the best things I've read this year. Recommended just about anyone who is interested in crime fiction and superheroes, independently of the other. But my only gripe about the series is that the first half, um, it's it's great because you don't know where Brubaker is going with this. It's like he he sets up this guy, and then he basically this character Zach Overkill in a situation, and then you wonder where's he going? Where's he going to go with this? Like he, he's then he. Basically, like, ganks work out from under him. So, oh, yeah, you get your powers back. Oh, wait, no, the good guys figure out, and they're going to fuck you over now. So, what What, what are you going to do? It's like, and we're, and we're what's, what, what is he going to do with this? Then, you get to the second half, and you realize, once you re and we start getting out of his, his origin, then you realize, oh, now I see where you're going with this. And not that it's necessarily bad, but just you know, that whole, like, oh, like, that whole, like, uncertainty, that incitement, you know, when you, you don't know where... It, what, what exactly is going to happen? That kind of slightly goes away. But, you know, for something that is ostensibly structured as an origin story, it's extremely well extremely well done. And Brubaker and has said that, yeah, this is going to be on, on an ongoing series. Like after, It's going to alternate arcs with, with criminals. Like, after this current arc with criminals done, they're going to do more incognito. And it's like, um, after looking at this, like, hey, if the opening arc... Opening introductory arc was this good. Then hey, how's the next arc going to be? Once I don't have to worry about any of the um, origin, like or setup, setup and stuff. So like, I'm look um, gung ho, looking forward to seeing what what they're doing with this. And so it's like, I can say it's like, again, it's like, if you, like I said, if you if you're still listening, if you like I said, if you if you want to know why Ed Brubaker is go great, it's so great, especially with when he's working with Sean Phillips, get Incognito. It's it's fucking awesome. And also, it's like if you, if you need more proof, and if you haven't bought Sleeper yet, Sleeper is now available in two volume in in two volumes now, down from the original four. So you can get season one for twenty five bucks, season two for twenty five bucks as well. Unless if you go through Amazon like I do. So and that's that's a fantastic read as well. So really, it's like you want you want to know why he's one of the most important. Every is one of the most important and compelling writers working today. That just go. Go buy all the stuff I said. Go buy Incognito. Go buy Sleeper. It's like, hey, you want go buy go buy X Men as well. It's like that's great stuff as well. Well, yeah, I say it's it's it, it's cool because it's like it's yeah, I said you're seeing them work way out of this comfort zone, and I'm impressed it turned out as well as it did. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I'd like to see it's more impressive than seeing um Bendis write um Avengers, which you know is good, but you know it's like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I got, so on that note, it's like I'm. Um, Call it night, and hey, next next time, I'm going to um try and do what I copped out of last year, and that's come up with my my top picks for the comics I read read this year. So if you're interested, 
Well, I'll see you back next time. All right. See you later. Laters.